Hi Maximum, looking cool. Which movie are you gonna watch? Hey Optima. You will never guess. Hmm. A lecture on LP? Amazing. How did you figure it out? Once you said I'll never guess, I just had to pick the least likely option. Hashtag brilliant. Hashtag elementary. Whatever. Would you care to join? Of course, I would love to. In this lecture, we'll continue discussing the simplex method. And uh, in particular, we'll look at some more examples. And then we'll discuss how we can solve the problem using simplex method in the table form rather than the algebraic form that we discussed in the previous example. As a working example, we will use the heavenly pouch problem that we formulated before and then solved graphically. The problem was as follows. So you wanted to maximize the profit, which was 15x1 plus 25x2. And then we had 1, 2, 3, 4 types of constraints and then non-negativity constraints. All right. So the first step that we take when we solve the problem using the simplex method, we will convert it to the standard form. So remember, the standard form is when we get rid of all the inequalities except for the non-negativity constraints. And we do it by introducing the slack variables for all the constraints. In this case, we have all the constraints in the lesson or equal to form. And as a result, we obtain the following model. So in this model now we have four equality constraints and non-negativity constraints for all the variables. Okay, so here is our LP. Uh, then what we have done before, we would have written this problem in the dictionary form, as we call it. For that, we just write the objective first, so which is uh, what we call the zero or row zero, right? So it was 15 times x1 plus 25x2. And then we would move all the slack variables to the left. Remember, the slack variables are our initial basic variables. So we typically underline a row 0. And then we have s1 is equal to 450 minus x1 minus x2. For S2, we have the following expression. So we have 300 minus X2. For S3, we had 2000 minus 4X1 minus 5X2. And finally, for S4, we have 350 minus X1. All right, so this is our problem in the dictionary format. Before, we solved similar uh, problems using the simplex method in the algebraic form, using this dictionary format, which was good to illustrate the method in detail. But usually, it's more convenient to actually do all the computations that we make uh, when we go from one step to the next in the table format. And what we'll do, we'll put this problem in the table format next. So in the table format, we'll have a column that will correspond to each variable that we have. So we'll actually have a column for z, even though it's not a variable, So, but we can think of this as a variable that represents the objective value. And then we'll list all the variables we have here, x1, x2, s1, s2, s3, and s4. Okay. And then we'll actually have the column for right-hand sides. In the dictionary representation, it was very clear which variable is basic in each row, because our agreement here was that we always put the basic variable in the left-hand side, and everything else is in the right-hand side. But now in the table format, we'll just have the coefficients for all the variables. So in this case, we assume that we actually move all the variables to the left-hand side, and the only thing that we'll have on the right-hand side will be just these constants here. Okay, so therefore, it will not be immediately apparent what is the basic variable that corresponds to a given row. So therefore, we'll have to specify the corresponding basic variable. 
Okay, so we'll have BV will represent the variable that is basic for each row. All right, so these are the columns that we have. And now we'll fill in the data for the table. But first, let's represent our LP in the format I just described. So I said that we'll move all the variables to the left-hand side. This is what we have already in this formulation in the standard form, except for the objective we have uh, here, maximize z, which is 15x1 plus 25x2. So this is the same as to write that z minus 15x1 minus 25x2 is equal to 0. So now what we'll do next, we will look at this standard form of LP here, and we'll just move all the data from the standard form into this table. So we'll start with uh, row 0. So in this case, we have the coefficient for z is 1. Then we have minus 15 is the coefficient for x1. Minus 25 is the coefficient for x2. The rest of the coefficients are zeros. The right-hand side is 0. Well, we can say that the basic variable corresponding to this row is z, even though it's not really the basic variable, but just to have something in this entry. Let's look at the first constraint. So we have the coefficient of 1 for x1, x2, and s1, and the rest of the coefficients are zeros. The coefficient for z is, of course, 0. So the coefficient for z will be 0 in all rows except for row 0. The coefficient for x1 is 1, for x2 is 1, for s1 is 1. Here we have 0, 0, 0. Right-hand side is given by 450. And uh, our basic variable in this row was S1, the slack variable for the first constraint. Now let's look at the next row. We have the coefficient for X2 is 1, for S2 is 1, the rest are zeros, right? So the right-hand side is 300. And our basic variable in this row is S2. The third constraint, so we have uh, the coefficient for z is 0. The coefficient for x1 is 4. The coefficient for x2 is 5. For s1 and s2 zeros, the coefficient for s3 is 1. Okay, so s4, 0. And the right-hand side is 2,000. So the corresponding basic variable is three, S3. Finally, the last constraint, we have X1 plus S4 is 350. So which corresponds to the following row. So now we have all the data for our problem in the table format. Or they usually call it in the literature tableau format. So this is uh, a French word which means table. So let's see. Tableau. It's tableau. Tableau. All right. Anyway, I will just use the table. So, but this is a traditional term that they use. Okay. So here we formulated our LP now in the table form, right? The difference to remember between the dictionary format and the table format is that in the table format we move all the variables to the left and we only leave constants in the right hand side whereas in the dictionary format we kept all the basic variables on the left and all the non-basic variables on the right so both ways of representing the lp have their advantages and disadvantages of course, in the dictionary format, we can clearly see what the constraints look like explicitly. When we do iterations in the dictionary format, we see what exactly we are doing instead of just doing things mechanically. Whereas in the table format, of course, the convenient feature is that it's easier to do the things mechanically. So we can just do iterations by applying the elementary row operations to this table. The disadvantage is that sometimes, you know, you lose the essence when you are doing things in the mechanical way. 
but it's good to know how to do it both ways. I suggest that you do some examples in dictionary format so that you clearly understand what is going on. And then you can switch to the mechanical format. You can do it in the table format more efficiently. Whichever way you do it, it's the same thing that you're doing. So both ways are equivalent. Yes, let's summarize the information. So our basic variables will denote by BV0. This is the list of basic variables for step zero. So the initial setup for our problem. Then our non-basic variables at step zero are given here. Then our basic feasible solution is given by, so here on top you'll write the original variables which were given in the problem formulation, and then below you'll write the slack variables, and then z is the value of the objective. So this is the information, the summary for the initial setup for our problem. And now we are ready to perform the first step. Okay, so here is our table representation. Let me go back to my writing here. Before we've done simplex steps in the dictionary format. So and remember our motivation was to increase the objective function value. So since the objective is expressed in terms of the non-basic variables here, we were looking at how changing non-basic variables from zero to something positive can increase our objective function value. And we would pick the most positive coefficient in the objective, and this would be our entering variable. This is in the dictionary format. In the table format, we move everything to the left, all the variables to the left, right? So what was positive here will become negative now, right? So now instead of plus 15, plus 25, we have minus 15, minus 25. Therefore, if we are to perform the iteration in the table format, we need to pick the variable with the most negative coefficient here as our entering variable. Okay, so let me mark this variable here. So this is uh, our entering variable. Okay, so what do we do next? As soon as we determine the entering variable, we need to determine the leaving variable. All right, so and the leaving variable will be one of the basic variables. So now we need to pick the row which will be the pivot row for our iteration. Just like we did it in the dictionary format, we will apply the ratio test. But again, we have to keep in mind that in the dictionary format, remember we, we were looking at the entries in each row corresponding to this column here, where the coefficient for x2 would be negative, right? So, but now since we moved x2 and all other variables to the left hand side, we need to look at positive coefficients instead of negative and apply the ratio test only for positive coefficients. So let's look at the column corresponding to x2. Of course, for ratio test, we will ignore the last row here because we have a zero entry. So everything else is positive, right? So for the first constraint, we'll have the ratio of 450 by 1, so which is just 450. For the second row, it will be 300 by 1, uh, 300, right? So, and then uh, for the third constraint, we'll have 2,000 divided by 5, 400. So the ratio test winner is the row corresponding to the second constraint, so the second row, this will be our pivot row. So S2 will be the leaving variable. Okay, so this is the row, which is the pivot row. And then this element on the intersection of the pivot column and the pivot row is what we call the pivot element. So, and now what we need to do is to eliminate the new basic variable x2 from all the constraints and the objective, right? Because we need to express all the basic variables and uh, the objective through the non-basic variables only. And right now, x2 is uh, involved in the objective and all the constraints, so we need to eliminate it, right? So how do we eliminate it? we can apply the elementary row operations okay so here we were lucky that the pivot element is already one 
if it was not, then what we would do, we would just divide every entry in this row by the value of the pivot element. And uh, this would result in 1 at this position here. All right. So and now we already have the row for the newly basic variable x2. The only change that we need to make to this row is we need to say that now the basic variable that corresponds to this row is not s2 anymore, but it is x2 now. All right. So this is the change that you make to this row. Let me replace s2 with uh, x2 here. Next, what we'll do, we'll use this pivot row to eliminate the non-zero entries in the column corresponding to x2, which exactly corresponds to what we have done before in the dictionary form. Instead of x2, you know, we would write the expression for x2 through the other variables. We would get it from the pivot row. And then we would just substitute for x2 in every other row. So how do we do it in the table format? We just need to multiply the pivot row by the negative of corresponding entry for the coefficient for x2 in each row and add it to each row. And then we'll get zeros, right? We can actually write the pivot row here. So it's uh, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 300. And now basic variable is x2. Let's first eliminate x2 from the objective, all right? So for that, what we need to do is multiply the pivot row by the negative of this entry, which would be 25. So we multiply the pivot row by 25 and add the result to row 0. As a result, we'll have the coefficient for z will still be 1. Then let's look at the coefficient for x1 in the result. So here again we have 0 times 25 is 0. And then minus 15 still remains minus 15. Then the coefficient for x2, of course, will become 0 because this is exactly how we selected the multiplier for this row. We wanted to get 0 here. Then we'll have 0 plus 0 is 0. Then 25 plus 0 is 25. You see now s2 became a non-basic variable, so now it's involved in the objective, right? For S3, we have 0 plus 0. For S4, we have 0 plus 0. OK, so we'll have 0, 0. And uh, for the right-hand side, we multiply 300 by 25. So we'll have 7,500. So this is our uh, new objective, actually. And uh, for row 0, we agreed to put z there as the basic variable, or you could just leave it empty, so it doesn't really matter. We can see that our new objective is z minus 15x1 plus 25s2 is equal to 7500. Or the other way we could write it would be z is equal to 7500 plus 15x1 minus 25s2. So this is how we would write it in the dictionary format. All right, so now let's look at the first constraint. We need to eliminate this element here. So right now the coefficient is 1. To eliminate it, I'll multiply the pivot row by the negative of this, so which is negative 1, and we'll add the result to the first row, right? For z, we we'll always have 0 here. Then for x1, 0 plus 1 still 1. Here we'll have 0, so we eliminated this coefficient. Then here we'll have 0 plus 1 is 1. This is for S1. For S2, we'll have minus 1 plus 0, minus 1. For S3, 0. For S4, 0. For the right-hand side, we need to multiply this by minus 1 and add it to 450. So we'll have minus 300 plus 450 gives us 150. And uh, the basic variable still remains the same for this row. So it's S1. 
Okay. So the only row for which the basic variable changes will be the pivot row, right? So now x2 is the basic variable here. All right, so we are done with rows 0, 1, and 2, and we have two more to go. All right, so here we have 5. We need to eliminate it. To eliminate it, we multiply the pivot row by minus 5 and add it to our row. So for z, the coefficient is still 0. Then here we have 0 plus 4, so the coefficient for x1 is still 4. For x2, the coefficient turns into 0. Then minus 5 times 0 plus 0 is 0. Minus 5 plus 0 is minus 5. And then 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0. And minus 5 times 300 is minus 1,500 plus 2,000 is uh, 500. All right, so this gives us the new row for the basic variable S3. And finally, we just need to do the last row. The coefficient here is already 0, okay, so we don't really need to do anything, okay? So that's an easy one. So I have 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 0, 1, 350, just copy it, and we are done, okay? So this is the step one table, or tableau, as we would say it in French. Tableau. Tableau. We see that now the basic variables are S1, X2, S3, S4, and uh, the corresponding values are given here in the right hand side. So S1 is 150, X2 is 300, S3 is 500, S4 is 350, and the objective is 7500. All right, so this completes the first step. Finally, it took like an hour. 20 minutes to be precise. This describes, again, the same details that we went over already. The first thing we do, we determine the entering variable, which is now the variable with the most negative coefficient in Z row. And then we perform the ratio test by dividing the entries in the right-hand side column by the corresponding entries uh, in the pivot column that are positive. We figured out that the minimum such ratio corresponded to the second row, and this was our pivot row. This was our pivot element here, and we used the elementary row operations to update all the entries in the table. Okay. As a result, we obtained this step one table, and uh, the corresponding step one dictionary can be easily extracted from the table, or vice versa. You see there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between these two. So it's just in the dictionary format, we write things in the alge algebraic form. So we spell out all the variables, write down the objective, the constraints. And uh, the agreement here is that we keep all the basic variables on the left, all, all the non-basic variables on the right. Whereas in the table format, we assume that all the variables went to the left. All the constants are on the right. Right-hand side consists of just the constants here and we spell out the basic variables for each uh, corresponding row. The summary of the step one basic feasible solution that we got was uh, this is the list of basic variables, the list of the non-basic variables, and the basic feasible solution for the original variables. We have x1 is 0, x2 is 300, and then we just write down the values for all the slack variables and the value of the objective. And now we are ready for step two. We look at the table corresponding to step one. And again, we find the variable with the most negative coefficient in row zero, which happens to be x1 with the coefficient of minus 15. And we perform the ratio test, all right? So for the ratio test, we look at the column for x1. Okay, and we look at the right-hand sides here. Of course, we ignore the row zero, but the ratio for the first constraint is 150. For the second, we have zero here, so we just ignore it. Then for the third constraint, we have 500 divided by 4, which is 125. And uh, 
for the last row we have 350 by 1 which is 350 obviously the minimum is 125 so this row is the winner of the ratio test this is our pivot element and then what we do so you see in this case we have four not one like we had in the previous case so the first thing we do in case like this we divide the pivot row by four so every entry in the pivot row will be divided by four and as a result we obtain this row here okay so we divide by four and then we replace the basic variable for this row used to be S3. Now we write X1 instead, right? So this is our new basic variable. Okay. And then we use this row to eliminate the coefficients for X1 from the remaining rows of the table. So in particular, to eliminate minus 15 here, what you do is multiply this row by 15 and add it to row 0 here right so as a result we can easily check that these are the values that we will obtain okay so and similarly we perform all other calculations and we update our tableau as a result this is the new table that we get we can see that all the coefficients in the objective row are actually positive which indicates that we reached the optimal solution this situation corresponds to all negative coefficients in the dictionary representation right here is the dictionary representation you see when we spell everything out we see that our objective is 9375 minus 25 fourth s2 minus 15 fourth s3 therefore the best we can do for the objective is uh, 9,375 by setting S2 and S3 to 0. And uh, this is our optimal solution. Of course, we can write down again the corresponding values for the variables in the basic feasible solution. So we had X1, 125, X2, 300. Then we have the slack variables and the objective value. But the way we report the solution, so you just report the values for x1 and x2, actually. So because this is what we really need and our objective value. Okay, So we can ignore the slack variables when we report the final solutions. The slack variables were not actually a part of the original model. The model didn't ask for their values, really. All right. Now, let's uh, formalize the optimality test that we actually applied when we solved the problem we'll write it for dictionary format and for table format okay if in a feasible dictionary all non-basic variables have non-positive coefficients in the zero then the corresponding basic feasible solution is an optimal solution of the lp and in the table format it's the opposite so if we use the table format then the basic feasible solution is optimal if all non-basic variables have non-negative coefficients in row zero of the corresponding table okay so remember the change in the sign of the coefficients between the dictionary format and the table format so but essentially it's the same thing Okay, so we figured how to recognize an optimal dictionary or an optimal table. But remember, we talked about different types of LP. Not all LPs can have optimal solution. For optimal LPs, yes, we have the criterion, right? So, but now let's look at some examples of unbounded LPs, actually, and how we can recognize them. Let's consider a dictionary and a tableau these are corresponding to the same problem so you see we have here the same data just written in a dictionary format and then in a table format in this dictionary we have just one candidate for the entering variable right so we are looking at the variables with the positive coefficient and the objective and there is only one such variable x2 what do we do next we perform the ratio test right so, but remember, the ratio test is performed only for the rows where we have 
minus sign for the coefficient for x2 in the corresponding row. All right, so and uh, if we look at the column corresponding to x2, we see that the coefficient for x2 is positive in the first constraint, it's zero in the second constraint, it's positive in the third constraint, and it's positive in the fourth constraint. Ratio test doesn't result in anything. So, and remember what was the motivation for the ratio test. The ratio test would tell us what is the maximum amount by which I can increase the variable x2 from zero up. And it looks like there is no bound in this case. So I can increase x2 as much as I wish. Everything will still remain feasible. If I increase x2 to some very, very large number, so let's say if x2 tends to plus infinity, then S1 will tend to plus infinity, S2 will still remain at 30, S3 will tend to plus infinity, and S4 will tend to plus infinity. So, but as I keep increasing X2, I remain within the feasible region, but my objective also increases to plus infinity in the process. All right, so we see that this problem is unbounded because I can increase my objective to plus infinity within the feasible region. The criterion to determine that the problem is unbounded is very easy here, right? In the dictionary form, if all the coefficients are non-negative for any given entered column, then this means that I can increase the objective to plus infinity. This means that the problem is unbounded. So, and the same thing for the table format, but here we need to remember that the signs change to the opposite for all the non-basic variables because we move everything to the left. In this case, if I look at the column corresponding to x2, I can see that all the entries in this column are non-positive, then this means that the problem is unbounded. Oh.